doing working capital management. We did a little bit of this in uh, the first semester when we did financial statement analysis. Remember, day inventory on hand, um, receivables, collection period, payables, payment period, all of that. But we're going to do it in a bit more detail tonight. You know, we want to know what working capital is. By now, we, I hope we know what profitability is. We need to keep reminding ourselves about liquidity and solvency, okay? We did liquidity and solvency in the first semester, but it applies to the second semester as well. Okay. So we've got the working capital cycle and then we've got the net operating cycle and we need to know the difference between those. And we need to be able to calculate the current ratio and the asset test ratio. You did that in the first semester. We're going to practice it again tonight. And you need to be able to calculate the following efficiency ratios. So these are, this is where the focus is tonight on these efficiency ratios and on calculating the net operating cycle of an entity. So you will see from the examples that we're going to do tonight, the last example that we're going to do, lecture example four, is an exam level question. So if we can do lecture example four tonight, then we can tick this section off. Okay, so let's hope that we manage to do that. It's not an area that I think requires a lot of practice, just a little bit of practice, two days or so before the text of exam will to be fine. Okay, so what is working capital? Okay, that's the current asset section of your whole capital. Okay, so it's the capital that's working. So it's the capital that you're using to buy inventory, the capital that you're using to pay your receivables, the capital that you're funding your operating cycle with. What is your operating cycle? You buy inventory, okay? This is in an entity that sells inventory. You're buying inventory and you have customers who may buy for cash or they may buy on account. So if they buy on account, then you have to actually use your own working capital to fund that until they pay. So that's what the working capital cycle is, okay? So <clears throat> it's to do with the ordinary operations of the company and it's to do with your current assets and your current liabilities, right? Which is why liquidity comes into it because liquidity is looking at the relationship between your current assets and your current liabilities. So it's the operating activities of the entity. In a retail entity, it has to do with your sales and your cost of sales, so your purchase and sale of inventory. And in a manufacturing entity, it has to do with the purchase of your raw materials and the period it takes you to convert those to finished products available to be sold. And then in addition to that, the period it takes the people who buy the goods from you to pay you back. Right. So, we purchase inventory for resale or we manufacture entity, it could be a manufacturing entity as well. But once we've manufactured the entity, we still have to sell it on. So it's the selling of the inventory for cash or on credit. So the impact of having a credit sales on your cash flow. So all of this has to do with cash flow. Okay. And if an entity cannot manage their cash flow, they often end up going into liquidation. So it's not only about making profit, it's also about making sure that you have the right cash flow. At the end of the month, you have to pay your workers, you have to pay your rent, and if you can't pay those, you have a problem. Okay, so a lot of companies go under, not because they've got a bad business model, or because they don't have sustainability in the long term, but because they aren't managing their cash flows properly. And this unit to do with working capital management has to do with how a company needs to manage their cash flows in order to stay in business. So we receive payments from account customers and we pay our suppliers. So it's the interconnectedness between these four things here that we're going to be looking at tonight. Okay. Just to remind you, we did this in the first semester, the net working capital of an entity is its current assets minus its current liabilities. Remember, tonight we're looking at working capital, which is only current assets and current liabilities. So, easy calculation, the net working capital is the current assets minus the current liabilities. 
So looking at an example now, if we have these current assets and this current liability, the networking capital is going to be the inventory plus the trade receivable plus the bank and cash minus the trade payables. Remember that your bank and your cash can be an asset or a liability depending on if you're in overdraft or if you've got a positive cap back balance at the bank. Okay. So we add those up and we get um, 980 plus 103 plus 68,500 and we subtract the trade table so the entity's net working capital is 883,000. We're going to now do your first lecture example, which is a simple one of calculating the network and capital. 22,000. Fantastic. 322,000? Yes. Excellent. Ishman? Ishman? Are you here? Take a hand off. Right, okay. So we need to manage our working capital to make sure we've got cash available to pay salaries and other expenses as they become due, as I said. Okay, so the working capital cycle is the time from when you buy the inventory to when your client pays it. So you bought the inventory from that point onwards, okay, you haven't paid yet, so you're not out of cash yet but you've still bought the inventory. So the whole working capital cycle is the period from when you buy the inventory to when the customer pays you back, okay? Um, the net operating cycle is the time when you are out of cash, when you have paid your supplier and you haven't yet received money from your debtor. So you've paid for the inventory, but you haven't got the money. So the inventory's been sold, but you haven't got the money yet. Okay? That is the net operating cycle. So the working capital cycle is the whole period, the whole cycle. The net operating cycle, that's one we want to keep as short as possible because that's when we are funding it ourselves out of our own working capital. The working capital cycle is from here to here, the whole period. The net operating cycle is the one we are concerned with because we've already paid for the inventory and we haven't yet received the money from the client, from the customer. So we are out of money at this point here and we want to keep this as short as possible, okay? You're buying your credit card, he gets the money and he's going today. So the money comes in from the customer is there. He pays his creditors in 60 days. So it's the other way around for him, okay? He gets the money from his customers first and only pays his creditors later. So he's using his customer's money to fund his business. Can you see that that's a very, very, very clever model? Okay, but most businesses work where there's a period where they are actually funding their own working capital and that's called the net operating cycle. We want to keep that as short as we possibly can. Okay, it's the days from when the trade payables have been paid and before we get our money from the debtors. And we have to finance this gap, it's called a gap, okay? And it's also called the operating cash cycle or the cash conversion cycle. We're going to be calculating the number of days that this net operating cycle is. So the whole purpose behind tonight's lecture is to be able to calculate in number of days the net operating cycle. Okay, how, how many days we're financing ourselves. So to do that, we need to calculate, we need to do three separate calculations. We need to calculate the number of days inventory we have on hand, okay? So that's our closing balance of inventory. How many days of sales do we have in that closing balance of inventory? And then the receivables collection period is, on average, how many days does it take your customers to pay you? And then the payables payment period is how many days on average you take to pay your suppliers. So we're going to take the day's inventory on hand because that's what we're financing as part of the, the working capital cycle plus the receivable collection period. So this is the period where our customers haven't paid us. 
So that's the whole working capital cycle, the day's inventory on hand, and the receivables collection period. So that's the day's inventory on hand, that's the receivables collection period. If we subtract from that the payment, payables payment period, we can calculate the net operating cycle. Okay? Remember trade receivables was called debtors and trade payables was called creditors. We now call it trade receivables and trade payables. So <clears throat> this gap here, we can calculate the day's inventory on hand. We've purchased the inventory and we haven't sold it yet. Can you see? We bought the inventory, we haven't sold it yet. This is inventory on hand. And my multiplying by 365, we can convert that number to days. Right. So all of these, we multiply by 365, because 365 days in a year, to convert it to number of days. Okay. The receivables collection period, we've sold the inventory, but we haven't got the money yet. So what is the average number of days it takes us to collect the money from our customers? We want to keep this receivables collection period as short as possible. Okay, that's what debtors clerks do. They phone people up and they say, when do you plan to pay <coughs> your account? Okay, and then this is the payables payment period. All right, so the longer we can <coughs> go from when we purchase the inventory to when we pay for the inventory, the shorter our net operating cycle is going to be, the less time we're going to be out of the money, okay? The smaller the gap. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the calculations now, right? Remember that all of these calculations are absolutely logical. So you have to think of them logically because you don't get given the formulae in a test or exam. But if you think of it logically, you'll be able to do it, right? So the inventory when we have sold it, becomes part of cost of sales, not so. So if we want to work out how many days inventory we've got on hand, what we're saying is how many days of sales have we got in stock as inventory. So we're comparing the inventory to the cost of sales, okay? That's where the cost goes when we've sold it. So this is the cost of sales for the whole year, so we're taking the cost of sale for the whole year and we're saying if we've got a cost of sales of 100,000 Rand and we've got 20,000 Rand with inventory on hand, then we must have 20% of our total sales we've got on hand because 20,000 as a percentage of 100,000. Then if we multiply it by 365, we can work out how many days we've got on hand. Okay, so that would be 70, 71 days. Okay, 20 percent. Think, yeah. Okay, so that's what we do. So if our cost of sales is 300,000 and the closing balance of inventory is 30,000, that's 10 percent. You can see that. Then we multiply by 365 to convert it to days, and we've got 36.5 days of sales in our closing balance of inventory. So we look at our cost of sales and we work out how much stock we've got, how much inventory we've got on hand, how many days of sale. The receivables collection period, okay, where does the receivables come from? It comes from credit sales. So we sell the goods, they haven't paid us yet, but what they owe us is the credit sales, not so. Okay. So we're going to take the trade receivables as a percentage of the credit sales and then to convert it to days we multiply by 365. That will tell us how many days worth of sales we have sitting in our trade receivables. Okay. That's not the number of days that the goods have been outstanding for. That's the number of day sales we've got. Right, so don't get it confused. So trade receivables comes from credit sales. If you don't, if you aren't told that so that the credit sales are twenty percent or eighty percent or whatever, then you use the full sales figure. Right. So unless you know what the total credit sales are, you use the total sales figure. So there, my credit sales are hundred thousand, and my closing balance of trade receivables. Fifteen thousand. Therefore, my receivables collection period is fifteen divided by hundred times three sixty 
55 gives you 55 days. Okay, so now we know that our day's inventory on hand is 36 and a half days and our receivable collection period is 55 days. Therefore, our total working capital cycle from when we buy the inventory to when the debtor pays us must be 55 plus 36.5, 18, 91 and a half days. Okay, 55 plus 36.5, 91 and a half days. Now we have to look at the payables payment period. Similarly to the receivables collection period, where does the trade payables come from? It comes from our purchases. Just the same as trade receivables come from our sales, the trade payables comes from our purchases. Okay, similarly, you assume all purchases are on credit unless you're given the percentage or the exact amount of the credit purchases. So, the problem is that when you are presented with a statement of profit or loss and a statement of financial position, the sales figure is there. The cost of sales figure is there. The closing balance of trade receivables is there. The closing balance of trade payables is there. But nowhere in your financial statements does it give you your purchases figure, does it? Mm -hmm. Think of your state for first semester. So you have to calculate the purchases figure. So this calculation here is normally the most difficult. Okay, we're going to do an example of how difficult it gets in a minute. All right, but for the meantime, I've told you the purchases figure and I've told you the trade payables figure, the closing balance. Therefore, your payables payment period, once again, you multiply by 365 to convert it to days. It's 20,000 divided by 150,000 times 365 gives you 49 days. So I said the total working capital cycle was 91 days. The net operating cycle is going to be 91 days minus 49 days. Okay? So you can see in the previous ones I rounded up. So your day's inventory on hand plus your receivables collection period minus your payables payment period gives you a net operating cycle of 45.6 days. So 45.6, one and a half months, we have to be able to finance ourselves. So the company has to have enough working capital to finance itself for 45 and a half days. In addition to that, it has to have enough working capital to pay the salaries at the end of the month and the rent and the electricity and the telephone, etc. This is how you calculate your net operating uh, cycle for the example we just did. Your day's inventory on hand is 36.5 days. You add your receivables collection period of 54.8 days and you subtract your payables payment period of 48.7 days and you can end up with a net operating cycle of 45.6 days. So days inventory on hand plus receivables collection period minus payables payment period gives you your net operating cycle of 45.6 days. That's what you're going to do in your next lecture example. Okay. Receivables collection period, you got 90 days. Everyone got that. Mm -hmm. Right. Then we got to payables payment period, okay? It's accounts payable over credit purchases. Remember these figures you've been given here are the closing figures because these are the figures in the statement of financial position. They must therefore be the closing balances, okay? So you've got your trade payables of 45,000, but you have to divide it by the purchases because that's where the payables came from, the goods you bought, the purchases, okay? But you don't know the purchases figure, but this is your closing balance of inventory, do you agree? This is your opening balance of inventory, and this is your cost of sale. Do you remember how to calculate the cost of sales? Yes. Cost of sales is equal to opening balance plus purchases minus closing balance. So you can actually do a little calculation like this, can't you? Your cost of sales is 80,000. Your opening balance is 30,000. Did I get that right? Yes. And your closing balance is 32,000. What do we do when we know the figure at the bottom but not the figures high up? Work we work backwards. backwards. You see how I keep teaching you to work backwards. So when you work backwards, what you subtract, you add. What you add, you subtract. Easy peasy. 
So, your purchase of figure, therefore, is your 18,000 plus 32 minus 30 gives you 82,000. Yes. Did you get it? Yes. Fantastic, eh? Hey? Fantastic. That's a first form. What? Fantastic. Really exciting. Okay, so therefore your payables payment period must be 45,000 divided by 82,000 times 365 gives you 200 days. And then the next thing you have to do was calculate your net operating cycle. So now you've got all the figures. 146 plus 90 minus 200. Did you get 36 days? Yes. So 36 days is just more than a month. That's actually oh, so man, not bad. If it's about okay. 0.5, we round off to, the, to like a whole number. Because you got the 5.7. You got the 5.7. 35.7 is good. <laughs> okay. So here yeah, I've also given you your whole working capital side for me. So here I put the days in 146 days plus 90 days is 236 days minus 200 days is 36 days. So we've got a relatively short operating cycle here. That's quite good. Okay. Let's do some more work. Okay. So solvency and liquidity. Okay. Remember that that relates to dividend payments. You may not pay your shareholders a dividend unless you are solvent and liquid before and after the dividend declaration okay so liquidity is your net working capital remember you take your total current assets minus your total current liabilities and if it's positive you are liquid okay so if your total current assets minus your total current liabilities is positive you're liquid or if your total current assets is more than your total current liabilities you are liquid and you are illiquid if your total current liabilities are more than your total current assets. Okay, so liquidity has to do with the company's ability to pay their debts as they fall due. Okay, solvency has to do with the long term picture, the ability of the company to continue operating in the foreseeable future, next year, next five years, next ten years. Okay, that's solvency. Liquidity is can they pay their salaries to their staff at the end of the month. Right. And we can compare the liquidity from one year to the next to see how efficient the company is doing. Right. So we've got two liquidity ratios, the current ratio and the asset test ratio. So the current ratio looks at the current asset divided by the current liabilities and gives you an amount. And the way that you express it, because the current assets should be bigger than the current liabilities, you put it as one or two point something to one. Okay, so you don't express it as a percentage, you express it as so much to one. And we want this to be, we actually want this to be higher than two, ideally. Okay, so we've got twice as many assets as current assets as current liabilities. Okay. This means we've only got 44% more current assets than we have current liabilities, okay? So if your salary uh, account every month is more than that, your wage bill is more than that, then you're going to be in trouble. So current assets minus current liabilities is net working capital. Current assets divided by current liabilities is your current ratio. And then, in a situation like this, where the current ratio is a little bit low, we might do an additional calculation, which is called the asset test ratio. The asset test ratio is like exactly how much cash have you got available to pay the salaries at the end of the month. Okay. So when it comes to the asset test ratio, we don't include inventory. Why? Because you can't just go out and sell inventory overnight. Right. So it's the 22nd of the month. You've got to pay salaries on the 25th. Have you got enough money to pay? We do the asset test ratio. So we do include trade receivables, but we don't include inventory. So generally, your current assets at this point will be your bank, uh, any cash you've got on hand, and your trade receivables. Because you can start phoning up and asking people to pay you money, okay? But if you have a sale, even if you have a sale, you're not likely to 
get enough money in to cover your salaries, although that is often the logic behind the sale. Right, so the asset test ratio is also expressed as a comparative. So that's an example of how you would do it, okay? You have to subtract your inventory from your total current asset, or you add all your total current assets excluding inventory. And then you divide by your current liabilities, okay? So 1.24 to 1 is where we end up here. Very, very low. Okay, so that's where you are, and you get 2.03 to 1. Did you? Yes. Excellent. All right, so here you've got cash sales, credit sales, cash purchases. So you've been given the credit sales and the uh, credit purchases. You've been given the cost of sales. You've been given your current asset. Remember, these are your closing balances and your current liabilities, okay? You've been given the purchases figure so you don't have to calculate it. Can you see that? For your payables payment period, you're going to use this figure, 99334. Oh. You've been, we took the 210,500 and subtracted the inventory, okay? And then we still use the total current liabilities of 103,500, okay? So you could do it this way or this way. This is an either or, okay? So you can either take the 210,500 and subtract the inventory, or you can take the receivables plus the staff loans and divide in both cases by the total current liabilities, okay? So the first thing you had to do was calculate your networking capital. So you had to take your current assets minus your current liability. That was very straightforward, okay? So that's your current assets minus your current liabilities. You've got 37,685 rand. Ma'am, what's the difference between the Networking capital is rands. Net operating cycle is days. Networking capital is your total current assets minus your total current liability. Next thing you have to do was calculate the current ratio. So now it's your current assets divided by your current liabilities. And really it's going to be something to one. Okay? So you take your total current assets divided by your total current liabilities, 4.61 to 1. That's nice. That's a good one. Remember the other one was 1.44. Yes. That's not nice. Okay? So four, you've got four and a half times current assets compared to current liabilities. This is good. Okay? You can see there you, you okay, well it depends on what your salaries are, what your wages are to be paid. But these are just small numbers, okay, but it's still good, the ratio is good. Then the asset test ratio, what I did here was I simply subtracted the inventory figure from the total, or you could have added trade receivables plus bank plus cash, okay? Divided by your trade variables. 2.2621. Okay, so an asset test ratio over 2 is also good. So that's looking good. I don't know why the quantity changed. Are you okay? Right. So we've done the first three. Now we've got to do these three calculations days inventory on hand, receivables collection period, and payables payment period. Remember that you must think about what drives it. Okay? So in each of these, the word that's mentioned in the description is the numerator, it's the one on top, okay? So days inventory on hand, inventory is on top, okay? Where does the inventory go? It goes to cost of sales. So your days inventory on hand is going to be your inventory over cost of sales times 365. You've got the cost of sales figure, you've got the inventory figure, so you get 34 days. Did you get that? Yes. All right. Then you've got to do your receivables collection period. So receivables is in there, the receivables is the numerator, okay? Where does the receivables come from? Credit sales. So the credit sales is the denominator. So you take your credit sales, your, your trade receivables, 21,670, divided by your credit sales, Remember, the most complicated this can be is they give you a total sales figure and they say 70% were on account. Then you just take the sales figure times 70%. That's how complicated it can be. That's not complicated. Okay. So your receivables collection period 
is 48 days. Happy? Yeah. Right. Next is your payables payment period. We know that this is the one that's normally most difficult, but in this case, you were given the credit purchases. Okay. So this can get difficult when you aren't given the purchases, but you're given the cost of sales and the opening and closing balance of the inventory got to calculate the purchases figure okay but now you were given it so your payables payment period is 38 days so your total working capital cycle is the full number of days from when you purchase the inventory to when the debtor pays you for the inventory so it's 34 plus 48 days 70 82 days is your working capital cycle 82 days your net operating cycle is 82 minus 38 four days okay what? 82 minus 38 82 minus 38 you can round off it's fine or you can leave it as point one or two decimal points it's fine so then you get 43.61 days is absolutely perfect. Look, 43.61 days, it's perfect. It's 100% perfect. Okay. That minus the inventory figure divided by the numbers. Okay.